Hello and welcome. It's that list show time of year again, and I'm here with mine. So I played a lot of indie games this year on the channel. I have, I actually didn't count it, so at least 350, we'll say that. Plus, the, you know, the uh, probably hundreds I didn't put on the channel. So there's a lot of games that I have played this year. Indie games, of course. And it's time to uh, to rank them. So I have today my uh, my top 13 indie games, plus a few honorable mentions, of course. Uh, now, I should, I should probably clarify to begin that uh, this is probably going to be a little different than your usual indie game list of 2019 because uh, I'm just ranking this on on one category and that is that is fun just how how fun was the game to me I don't uh, I don't care who made the game I don't care how much money they spent making the game or the graphics or the art it's just all about what games were the most fun for me to play this year and uh, these are games uh, that came out uh, this year there I tried to not do any early access ones there's a couple that snuck in there but uh, for the most part these are games that were released this year 2019 and the ones that I had the most fun playing. So I suppose we start this thing off with number 13, Islanders. This is a, uh, as the Steam page calls it, a minimalist strategy game about building cities. It's been developed by Grizzly Games, came out back in April. Uh, think of it as a, um, I guess, a city builder Tetris, which doesn't sound fun at all, but, well, it is fun. It's, it's a very simple kind of thing. You kind of sort of put your buildings in there and create yourself a little town on an island and then move on to the next one. It's just very... A very simple little game, but it's it's just done perfectly for uh, for a little indie game, and it's dirt cheap as well. But that doesn't I'm not figuring that in. But uh, yeah, it's uh, well worth number thirteen, number twelve, Heretic Operative. So this one plays out. It's, it's like a fantasy board game, I suppose. You've got evil cults, you know, and and it's uh, you're trying to uh, fight off these evil cults, and things are coming at you, and you're doing all you can to stop these things and and save the world. If you're a fan of Arkham Horror or uh, or like Pandemic. It kind of has that uh, that feel to it, but uh, it was created by C Prompt Games. Came out back in February of this year, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, it, yeah, just sort of a, a, a digital board game. Essentially, is probably the best way of explaining this one, a fantasy board game. But uh, it makes number twelve. Number eleven is Shortest Trip to Earth, which uh, if there's ever a game as you could call like a uh, FTL two. It would be this one. There's a lot of games that come out that are very similar to, to FTL, and they try to be FTL. This one did it right, I think. Being developed by Interactive Fate and published by, by Iceberg. Uh, it's, you know, you go out and you equip your ship, you hire your crew, and you go on your, your trek, trying to bounce from planet to planet, making it to a certain point. Of course, there are fights along the way, and in those fights, you're doing all you can to fire weapons, as well as manage your crew, and it's kind of frantic. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very good uh, rogue light spaceship sim. That came out back in August. That makes number ten, uh, number eleven. Number ten is Fit for a King, which uh, it's it's a bit of a weird one, um, and it I think it only has like twenty reviews on on Steam. So apparently it didn't go, it, no one really saw it. Uh, but it's it's a game, uh, Henry the Eighth Simulator is what it what it calls it, where it's your job. You're just running a kingdom. You are the king, and you run around, and you can chop people's heads off if you like. You can marry th things. If you like, you can you can take over the church and, and issue edicts. Uh, if the church won't let you divorce your wife, well, then you go take over the church and then you divorce. You know, so uh, it's it's a strange one, but it uh, it's a lot of fun, and that's why it's there at number ten. It's been developed by Brent Ellison and Tanya Sharp Short, I think is what it was, uh, and published by Kit Fox back in September. Number nine is Littlewood, and uh, this one's this one's been around. Folks, most folks know about Littlewood. It's a it's a uh, a, a new style Animal Crossing. I suppose it's probably the best way of, of explaining that. But you know, relaxing RPG kind of thing. Some day, sometimes you don't want to go and and run a kingdom or, or build a town or or uh, or whatever. Sometimes you want to just sit back and and live in a little town, build houses for your friends, go make friends, and uh, just sort of travel around and do various little relaxing uh, town building kind of. Uh, RPG kind of things. This was been developed by Sean Young, came out back in June, and it makes number nine. Number eight is another, another. it's different, but it's a, it's a relaxing god game, we'll call it that. Uh, been developed by Powpit, came out back in July, called Tidal Tribe. So this one is, you've got a, a, a beach, essentially, full of little villagers. And these little villagers, they, they, they love you. Because you're the god, you're going to take care of them. You're going to uh, shape the land and try to protect them from the giant waves coming in and, and ruining their lives, uh, or you cannot if you want, and let's just let them suffer. 
But as time goes on, they sort of build a little village up. It's it's really sort of a, a standoffish, um, do very little things to the game, but kind of more of a more of a watching kind of a god game. Um, but it's uh, I had a lot of fun with it, and I think I did a few videos on that one. But it uh, I think more fun was just sort of watching the villages grow, and uh, of course you have two different, two different tribes that can go to war and have all kinds of terrible things happen uh, if you are a bad god. But it uh, makes the number eight spot. Number seven is Rise to Ruins, which is a game that I've been playing for a very long time, and I've been waiting for like three years to put it on the list because it's always been early access. It's finally been released, which means I finally get to put it on the list. It's a it's a uh, it's a village sim, sort of like a Rim World Door Fortress kind of a style thing. You build a little little town, you got little houses and things and and uh, lumber mills, you know, all that kind of stuff, putting out onto the the land, and you're trying to defend yourself from terrible things coming from elsewhere in the world. It's, so it's a it's a mostly town management, a little bit of a, a tower defense as well, because these the swarms are going to start building and building and trying to take you out. Uh, but uh, it, I've been playing it for a long time. I will, I will continue playing it for quite a long time as well. Developed by Raymond Dorr and published by 60 Gig. Came out back in October, full release of this year. Number six is Wildermyth. Okay, so I'm breaking the rules here. Wildermyth is still in early access, and... Uh, it's not supposed to make the list, but I just I really enjoy this game, and uh, it could probably be number one. Actually, if it, if it was full release, I probably could put it number one. It's um, it's very much a, a story driven RPG. So we are uh, you're creating a uh, a party of, of of heroes, and as you go through this uh, this story, this sort of comic book style story, uh, your your heroes change and they and they age up and 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 they they have dialogues and and it really makes you connected to the character, something I have sort of learned over the years of, of playing many, many different uh, different games. The things that really stand out to me, other than things that are unique, is is things that that whenever I'm done playing with it, I um, it gets me a- attached to some of the characters. Like, for instance, on Wilder Myth, you, you may have someone that's with you for, for many, many uh, missions with you, and then they may, they may change because they touched something which gave them a, a crystal eye or gave them wings, and this sort of all takes place in the story, and and you really get attached to these folks if they uh, if they die or if they if they retire or whatever. And Wild Myth does a very good job of getting you attached to your uh, to your party members, your your NPCs, your characters that you have in the game. So that's why that one's at number six, breaking the rules a little bit. Number five is A Legionary's Life, which I played quite a bit of on this channel. Came back in back in twenty uh, or in September twenty fifth by Alessandro Roberti. Uh, basically, what you are doing here, you're a Roman soldier during the Second Punic War, and you're basically, you're a nobody. You're just some guy with a shield and a sword in the Roman army. And it's your job to do what uh, what your centurion tells you to do. You can, you buy it. You go out, you get your money, you go out, you can buy some gear. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, show off, you can go, occasionally things will come across and you'll do various missions to try to get yourself some rank or some medals or whatever. It's a, it's a very, very story heavy RPG but you start out as a grunt sort of work your way up and uh, yeah that's that's my number five number four is is breaking the rules one more time and it's workers and resources Soviet Republic this is in early access um, but it is um, I really enjoy this one it's it's my favorite city builder that I've played in a long time uh, it's because of the depth basically you you are in charge of an old Soviet Republic you you um, it's it's completely self-sustaining if you want it to be considered options up for this. But if you want to build roads, then you have to go out and you have to get the gravel. You have to go get the tar. You have to do everything to get every piece of your town set up. If you want to build a, a, a house, then, of course, you need the bricks and you need the wood. And you need, you know, everything to put it together. And it's it's um, it's a very it's a very deep city builder that is in Early Access. It came out back in March 15th when it, was when it hit Early Access on Steam. And it's by three division. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's my number four. Number three is Forager, which is, you know, it's just one of those games. I mean, you can call it like an idle game, basically. But it's it's by Hopfrog. came out back in April of this year. It's one of those games where you just can't stop playing. You're, uh, you know, you're going out and building up your, your workshops or whatever and exploring the islands. And uh, then this, you explore one island and you just, you just can't stop. Next island, you got you to gotta go see it. And uh, it's, it's one of those, like... And in, in this, this, the story behind the developer, uh, Hot Frog, and, and making this game, and, and uh, it's it's just sort of the when you think of an indie game, Forger is kind of the same kind of the thing that comes to mind for for an indie game. 
Number two is the one I almost put number one, but I took me a while to debate on this. Six Ages is my number two. I never played King of Dragon Pass, which this is a, uh, a, a you know, it's basically like a King of Dragon Pass part two. But uh, it's, you start out, you create the myth of your people, you, you're running a band of, of um, Stone Age type people. It is magic and all this sort of stuff going on. And you, you start out creating the myth, you sort of play their story. Uh, another one of those games where you really get attached to the characters and you start, you have your whole line of, of, uh, of people that you will give you suggestions and you may take it or, or leave it. And uh, another, yeah, another one of those you get attached to your characters and you sort of play out their story, play out their myth. Uh, you may send them on, on some sort of um, spirit quests along the way and, and, and you're just trying to run a, a kingdom essentially all in a sort of mytho mythological feeling to it. This was by David Dunham. It came up back in October of, of this year. Again, I never played King of Dragon Pass. Uh, I own it. I actually bought it the other day. This one's also on phones. Um, I need to pick up my phone on my phone so I can play it there, I guess. So, before we get to number one, we should talk about a few uh, a few runner-ups. So, let's talk about Farah for the first one. So, this one, I play a lot of, a lot of roguelikes throughout my uh, throughout the year on the channel. I play a lot of them on the channel, just, just period. And I have a whole roguelike month, after all. So Faro is by far my favorite roguelike that I, I play this year. It's a very very open ended roguelike, uh, one of those where you're just sort of you're sort of bouncing around. This is by B Brian is creative, and it's over on itch. Um, but you're sort of exploring the world, and you can really do anything you want in this. And I like I really like that style of uh, of, of roguelike that has sort of these endless possibilities. It's sort of the uh, the idea behind something like like Farah. Uh, number uh, well, uh, still in the in the uh, honor, honorable mentions here. I got to mention Foundation. Uh, it just hit early access this year. I've been playing it for a while on just through their page or whatever, but they're finally on Steam early access, and um, it's 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 a medieval vill village builder, and it's just it's super well done. And of course, you can you can customize some of your buildings, and uh, I just have a lot of fun playing Foundation. And it's not officially on the list because it's it's not officially full release, which I know a couple of them were, but it still needs, it still needs a few time to, a little time to brew before it hits, uh, the list that I have anyway. Uh, so Lasta is, is another one on here, which went through Kickstarter just, um, a few months ago. It's a, it's a fifth edition D&D &D style party-based fantasy RPG, and, uh, we need more of those. Sort of reminds me of things like Baldur's Gate, or, or you know, all the old timey party-based D&D style things. We have Pathfinder things, it's about time we get a 5th edition thing. And uh, I don't have a date for it or anything like that. It's just it's by Tactical Adventures. And uh, there's a Steam page. But basically just the Dungeons and Dragons for computer. Basically. And I want more of that. Uh, I can't go through a, a, a list like this and not mention World Box. So a World Box, if you're not sure what it is, basically you go out, you build a world, and then you watch it burn. And uh, you can you can assist in that world burning, if you wish. I like playing it a little bit different than I think you're supposed to play it, where you, I like putting in real life things, real life maps, and put out battles, and try to just let the AI do its uh, do its thing. It's still pretty early days of development, and um, I guess there's two ways the game could go. They could develop further with the the god powers and destroying things, which I hope they don't, and they could go with the focusing on better AI and helping. Uh, develop that and diplomacy and all that and I really hope that's the way that it gets developed because if that's the case then I'm very much looking forward to it so there we go those are the honorable mentions now before we get to number one I should um I want to make sure I clarify because people there may be some folks that don't like this as my number one because it it may or may not qualify as a proper game um but whenever I when I play this game it's it's the first one that I've played in a long time that that I went and I told I told the stories of what happened in this game to my friends, to other folks outside of, of YouTube folks. And uh, it's one of the games that sort of sticks with you. And and I just if you if you put this list, according to me anyway, as as the game that I had the most fun playing in the hundreds of games that I played this year, the game that I had the most fun playing was AI Dungeon 2. Um, now I, I realize it's it's a text based sort of thing. You're just sort of making stories up and it's it's broken. Um, and, and it, you know, it works every once in a while and it, it's weird, but it is a ton of fun. And, and I've played a lot of it off, um, camera and I've told many stories about it. The thing I probably most 
compare it to would be like Dwarf Fortress. I love Dwarf Fortress. And the thing I love about Dwarf Fortress, not necessarily playing the game Dwarf Fortress, but the stories you get out of it, and just the weird things that happen, and it's just crazy, and I love it. And that's that's what AI Dungeon 2 is. You make up a story, you know, and you sort of, you hold on. Do You do what you can to see what uh, how it goes. So that's um, that's my number one, and of course the potential that may go along with, with something like a game like this. This is, you know, created with uh, using open AI, so it's just sort of... Um, um, computer generated AI generated and AI run game essentially when you're making these stories up but there is my list for the top 13 uh, games of the year of my hundreds that I've played I mean there's a lot of them that could have made the list but these are the ones I had to sort of pick out for um, for the best according to according to me anyway I have a little bit of a different opinion on how um, what what makes a good game and uh, most of that just involves something unique and something that, um, well, is unique. <laughs> that's, that's, those are my two requirements for, uh, for being a, a fun game to me. So thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for watching throughout the year. This is end of the year, end of 2019 here. So we'll do this again, end of 2020, I guess. And um, thanks for watching. And I will see you all next time.